Hi, I'm Bonnie Yoon of the Yoon Law Group. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to get sponsored for a green card through your employer. I'm going to limit my discussion today on basically two of the employment-based visa categories. There are five total ways you can get sponsored through employment, but today I'm going to limit my discussion to just the second and third employment-based categories, otherwise known as EB2 and EB3. EB3 is when you have a bachelor's degree or perhaps only two years of work experience and that qualifies you for the job. An EB2 category, however, is slightly faster and that's if you have a master's degree or a bachelor's degree plus five years of work experience. There are three distinct stages when you get sponsored for a green card through employment. The first stage is with the Department of Labor. This is where the employer shows the Department of Labor that they've tried to hire U.S. citizens for the job, but they can't find qualified workers. So how does the employer do that? Well, they would place an ad in the newspaper, on a job search website, with the State uh, Department of Labor job search website, and various other areas of recruitment. If you get past stage one and you get an approval notice from the Department of Labor, then you get to go on to stages two and three. Sometimes, depending on your level of category, either EB2 or EB3, you would get to file stages two and three together. However, for purposes of clarity, I'm going to divide the discussion of stage two and stage three. Stage two is where you have the approval and now you're going to file what is called an I-140 petition with USCIS. That is the stage where USCIS checks that the employer has the financial ability to pay your salary and that you are in fact qualified for the job. If you get an I-140 approval notice, then you get to file stage three, which is the actual green card application. This is the I-485 form. When you file the I-485, not only do you and your family get to apply for work permits and travel permits, but that usually allows a greater amount of freedom. Stage one. This is called PERM, P-E-R-M, or labor certification. This is probably the most intensive part of your employment-based immigration uh, processing. This is where you file uh, the PERM with the U.S. Department of Labor stating that the employer has tried to recruit U.S. workers for this job but could not find any qualified ones and therefore must sponsor this foreign national for the job. So what are the steps that they're looking for? Department of Labor likes to see that for a professional position, which is either an EB2 or an EB3 position, which requires the minimum of a bachelor's degree or higher, that there are five forms of advertising done for this position. If you want to see a complete list of the forms of advertising that uh, you can make, you can please go to my website at yunlawgroup.com. If you manage to get through all the pitfalls of stage one, then you will get a certified PERM or labor certification. It will come in a blue form and it will be signed by the U.S. Department of Labor. Now this PERM will expire within 180 days, so it's very important to go ahead to stage two. Stage two the I-140 stage. You've got your labor certification perm approval and now you're raring to go because you have to file it within 180 days before it expires. What are the requirements? Well, the employer has to prove that they have the financial ability to pay your salary. Now, even before I start a perm, I always request the employer's financial documentation. That's so that I know that I've gone through this entire PERM process and oh my goodness I just discovered that the employer's tax returns show a deficiency and cannot pay the salary. That means that you've wasted your entire first stage PERM application. 
So for the employer, it's very important to check the net income on the corporate tax return, or if it's a solo, sole proprietorship, you want to check the net income on the personal tax return. I've had denials where people have come to me by the I-140 stage where they didn't check the ability to pay, and then USCIS receives the I-140 and they say, sorry, you are not eligible to sponsor this employee. The second thing that they're checking for is that the employee has all the credentials that were in fact stated in the PERM. Did they have the bachelor's degree? Did they have the master's degree? I had mentioned earlier the differences between an EB-2 and EB-3. For an EB-2 position, the employee must have a master's degree or foreign equivalent or a bachelor's degree plus at least five years of work experience. For an EB-3 category, which is a skilled worker, depending on what is stated on the PERM, you may need the minimum of a bachelor's degree or at least two years of work experience. I've had employees come to me to file just the I-140 stage and we're going through their documents and find out they're missing their employer verifications. It's pretty heartbreaking once you've gotten your PERM approved and you think you're ready to file stage two and you realize, oh my goodness, I'm not qualified to file the I-140. Stage three. This is the most exciting stage where the employee gets to file their I-485 application. If they have family members, the family members also get to concurrently file their I-485. Sometimes you get to file stage three together with stage two, which is great. Um, that means that your priority date, which I also explain in my frequently asked questions page, uh, if your priority date is current, you get to file I-140 together with your I-485 in conjunction. When the 485 is filed, basically USCIS is checking your biographical history. Do you have any criminal record? Do you have uh, anything that would prevent you from getting your green card? They're doing all their checks and balances. You will get fingerprinted in order for them to finally approve your green card. When you file the 485, you also get to file what's called an I-765, which is your work permit application and also your I-131, which is a travel document. And this is great because once you get your work permit, you can work a second or third job. Your family members can get jobs because then they can get their social security numbers. They can get their driver's licenses. They can travel without having to get a visa at the U.S. consulate abroad. So a lot of employees are waiting to get to this final stage, which basically gives them a lot more freedoms here in the United States. Now that I've talked about the three stages of employment-based immigration, I want to encourage you to gather all your documents together. You can take a look at my website for the list of documents required to get yourself sponsored for a green card. There's also a list for employers. The three stages each have different processing times. Stage one, as I mentioned, is taking on average about a year to get a PERM approved. Stage two, the I-140 petition, on average, if you're doing regular processing, takes about six to eight months. But recently, USCIS granted what is called premium processing for I-140s for EB-2 and EB-3 categories. That means if you pay an additional filing fee of $1,000, you can get the I-140 approved in as quick as two weeks. The I-485 form, depending on whether you get to file it concurrently with the I-140 or you have to wait until your priority date is current, is on average taking about a year and a half to two years. However, if your priority date is not current, meaning there are no visa numbers available for your category, unfortunately you will have to wait until the visa bulletin says those numbers are available. I know this is a lot of information to digest. I know I've given you just a general overview of the EB-based process. 
If you have more questions, I highly encourage you to come see me for a consultation or to take a look at my website for all the additional information you may need. Good luck with your green card.